Everything about Israel is fake. It's a completely synthetic nation, created without any regard for the organic socio-political movements of the land and its people, slapped rootless atop an ancient, pre-existing civilization with deep roots. That's why it cannot exist without being artificially propped up by non-stop propaganda, lobbying, online influence operations, and mass military violence. Israel is so fake that its far-right Minister of National Security, Itamar Ben-Gvir, has been stoking religious tensions by encouraging militant Zionists to pray on the Temple Mount, known to Muslims as Al-Aqsa. This is an illustration of how phony Israel and its political ideology are because Jews were historically prohibited from praying at the Temple Mount under Jewish law, a sign placed there in 1967 and still upheld by Israel's chief rabbinate, reads, According to Torah law, entering the Temple Mount area is strictly forbidden due to the holiness of the site. It's just this weird, evangelical, Christian-like thing that Zionists have started doing in contravention of their own traditions and religious texts to advance their nationalist agendas. Journalist Dan Cohen explains on Twitter, quote, Prayer on the Temple Mount is a 100% Zionist invention in total contravention of Jewish law. Jews don't step foot onto the Temple Mount, let alone pray there. That's why the sign below is posted at the entrance non-Muslims use. Ben Gvir publicly announced this in order to provoke a reaction to use as a pretext to restrict and expel Muslims from the site, explode Jerusalem and the West Bank, and expand the regional war. Ben Gvir holds Netanyahu hostage. Together, they're leading Israel to self-destruction. End quote. There's no authentic spirituality in such behavior. It has no roots, no depth, no connection. It's the product of busy minds with modern agendas, with nothing more to it than that. Israel is so fake that Zionists artificially resurrected a dead language in order for its people to have a common native tongue for them to speak, so that they could all LARP as indigenous Middle Easterners together in their phony, synthetic country. Israel has no real culture of its own. It's all a mixture of organic Jewish culture brought in from other parts of the world by the Jewish diaspora, culture that was stolen from Palestinians, see quote-unquote Israeli food, and the culture of indoctrinated genocidal hatred that is interwoven with the fabric of modern Zionism. The way Israel has become a mecca of electronic dance music points clearly to an aching cultural void that its people are trying desperately to fill with empty synthetic pop fluff. Even international support for Israel is fake, manufactured astroturf that has to be enforced from the top down, because it would never organically occur to anyone that Israel is something that should be supported. The phenomenally influential Israel lobby is used to push pro-Israel foreign policy in powerful Western governments like Washington and London. Just yesterday, U.S. Representative Thomas Massey told Tucker Carlson that every Republican in Congress besides himself has an APAC person assigned to them with whom they're in constant communication, who he describes as functioning like your babysitter with regard to lawmaking on the subject of Israel. The Israel lobby exists with the full consent of the Western Imperial War Machine and its secretive intelligence cartel because Western military support for Israel is also phony and fraudulent. The Western Empire, whose strategic interests directly benefit from violence and radicalism in the Middle East, pretends it's constantly expanding its military presence in the region in order to promote stability and protect an important ally. But in reality, this military presence simply allows for greater control over crucial resource-rich territories whose populations would otherwise unite to form a powerful bloc acting in their own interests. The Israel lobby is a self-funding consent manufacturer which helps the empire do what it already wants to do. Support for Israel in the media is also phony and imposed from the top down. Since October, outlets like the New York Times, CNN, and CBC have been finding themselves fighting off scandals due to staff leaks about demands from their executives that they slant their Gaza coverage to benefit the information interests of Israel. 
Brianna Joy Gray was just fired by The Hill for being critical of Israel as co-host of the show Rising, a fate that all mass media employees understand they will share if they are insufficiently supportive of the empire's favorite ethnostate. Israel's support from celebrities is similarly forced. A newly leaked email from influential Hollywood marketing and branding guru Ashley Margulies instructs her firm's employees to, quote, pause on working with any celebrity or influencer or tastemaker posting against Israel. As we discussed recently, celebrities are also naturally disincentivized from criticizing any aspect of the Western Empire by the fact that their status is dependent on wealthy people whose wealth is premised upon the imperial status quo. Support for Israel on social media is likewise notoriously phony. For years, Israel has been pioneering the use of social media trolls to swarm Israel's critics and promote agendas like undermining the BDS movement. After the beginning of the Gaza onslaught, Israel spent millions on PR spin via advertising on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And the New York Times has just confirmed earlier reports that Israel has been targeting U.S. lawmakers with fake social media accounts to influence their policymaking on Israel. In truth, nobody really organically supports Israel. If they're not supporting it because their lobbyists and employers told them to, they're supporting it because that's what they were told to support by the leaders of their dopey political ideologies like Zionism, liberalism, and conservatism or by the leaders of their dopey religions, like Christian fundamentalism. It's always something that's pushed on people from the top down, rather than arising from within themselves due to their own natural interests and ideals. Israel is not a country. It's like a fake movie set version of a country. A movie set where the set pieces won't even stand up on their own, so people are always running around in a constant state of construction, trying to prop things up and nail things down and scrambling to pick up things that are falling over and rotating the set pieces so that they look like real buildings in front of the camera. Without this constant hustle and bustle of propagandizing, lobbying, online influence ops, and nonstop mass military violence, the whole movie set would fall over, and people would see all the film crew members and actors and cameras for what they are. Clearly, no part of this is sustainable. Clearly, something's going to have to give. Those set pieces are going to come toppling down sooner or later. It's just a question of when and of how high the pile of human corpses needs to be before it happens.